Hey movie fans, pretty excited to talk to you tonight about a movie that actually came out a few years ago, but I just finally got to see it. Uh, this is a movie called Split by M. Night Shyamalan, starring James McAvoy, and yes, I finally got to see it. I, I stayed away from it originally. Um, I hadn't loved what Shyamalan had been doing recently and hadn't seen some of the ones he'd been doing recently. And uh, just honestly, was just kind of like scared. <laughs> uh, scared of it, scared of what it was gonna be like, what it was gonna do, and just thought, you know, it may not be, may not be good that way, you know? But uh, was intrigued when it originally came out because of what James McAvoy does in this movie, portraying all these different personalities. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, didn't get to see it until just recently, and I liked it. <laughs> I really did like it. I, I did like it. Um, I liked that it had a protagonist in it, a main character. Her name was Casey Coombs, and she was played by Anya Taylor-Joy. She also, I thought, was a, a, a really good actress, did a great job. Um, that was cool to me to have, you know, that side of it, something to cheer for, something to root for. Um, but, yeah, there, there's still some pretty disturbing content in it. Uh, definitely a PG-13 movie, um, but I felt like I was really well prepared for the content. So, like, other people who had seen it told me what was in it, and what it was like, and I'd read some synopsis, uh, a synopsis online uh, to kind of know what I was getting into, uh, and that definitely helped. Uh, I guess, you know, sometimes when we, when we read about things, we maybe imagine it at its worst. So then when you see it in the movie, I, I felt like, you know, it did, they did a good job of not making it as awful as it could have been. Uh, but definitely some disturbing content and uh, very mature nature going on there of, of, of what's happening uh, in the movie, but also what had happened to the characters in the past. So, uh, yeah, but I, I did. I liked the movie. I thought it was really intriguing and uh, really thrilling and really intense and uh, pretty just, I don't know, fascinating. Uh, there's so much more, but I'll, I'll get into that as we keep going. So, just kind of as a recap, yes, big time spoilers here. I'm just going to talk about the movie and what it has. Uh, part of that is if if you hadn't seen it but kind of wanted to know more about it and wanted to know what it was like, um, especially gearing up for, for the movie Glass, I wanted you to have this to kind of help you know what it was. Uh, if you if you didn't really feel like you wanted to see it because of the disturbing content that's involved. So as a recap um, So we learned about this girl Casey Coombs who's kind of an outcast and She and two other girls were gonna go uh, From party home together that she was only invited to because you had to invite everybody um, and they get abducted like opening scene in the movie <laughs> James McAvoy comes in and in his one of the personalities, one of the personas, and uh, kidnaps these girls, and uh, so they're they're kidnapped right from the very beginning. So basically, the whole movie they're kidnapped, uh, and as it goes on, we we see them, and they're you know trying to do whatever they can to to escape or to get away, um, and we start to see that you know this person that kidnapped them is it's the same person, but it's a different person, and we learn about him having you know these different personalities. Uh, the movie also takes us to his uh, psychiatrist, his therapist, and uh, we learn from her about um, th these mental disorders and the, the nature of them and how she's really been studying them and learning about them. And part of that, she's learning that, how real it is when, when uh, a person with this disorder can just become somebody else. Um, but then it kind of takes it to a new level of where maybe even physical things change in them when they're these different personalities. Um, one example given was that uh, a person who was blind had other personalities and in her other personalities she wasn't blind and when in that personality could physically see like a physical change happened. Kind of like talking about the power of the mind. So, so we're kind of learning about that and we're figuring out about um, the James McAvoy character and all these different personalities, which we find out they're 23, and it's gearing up to the coming of, a, of like a 24th personality, which we start to learn is 
a beast. <laughs> um, and the beast is coming, and it's just like, oh, the beast is gonna come, and that's not good. And, ah. <laughs> so there's that, and that's like, you know, building up the suspense as we're going, and we're learning more is that that's what it's going to. Um, but it's gearing it up on that end as part of what the psychiatrist was talking about, like this evolution kind of thing, and that like this mind, which might be considered broken, is like a next step um, of supernatural strength or, or powers or abilities or, you know, physically having that kind of change. So that's what it's getting up to from that end, and that's what it's from her side. And so we're leading up to the beast, so we know it's going to be this, this thing. Uh, and we're learning more in the story, too, about the, the main girl, Casey, and how her past has been pretty troubled. We learn that uh, James McAvoy's character, which I'll call him Kevin, um, that Kevin's past was troubled as well, and that he'd, he'd been abused. And we start to learn then to see that Casey's also was a, a troubled past, where she, her father died when she was really young, and she'd been abused by, by an uncle, and awful, terrible, terrible, awful, awful, terrible thing. So sad. Um, so that's kind of the story, and that's where it's going. And then it leads up to uh, the climax of the coming of the beast. And man, holy cow. I, I guess I didn't read the synopsis very carefully because in my mind I thought that everyone was going to die and it was only going to be Kevin, James McAvoy's character Kevin, like surviving and, you know, winning. Um, but uh, the, like I was like halfway through the movie. I was watching it in like little segments. Um, but I was partway through the movie and we were watching TV and... Uh, a commercial for Glass came up, which showed the character Casey, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> so then I got like super excited about the rest of the movie because I was like, "She's gonna make it!" <laughs> so that was pretty cool. So she does; she makes it um, while the beast is there and she sees it doing its thing. Which you know, that's where some of the disturbing, most disturbing content comes in. Um, the beast attacks her. She has a gun. She shoots him with a gun, point blank, and. Yeah, he just gets back up, and he bends these bars, and as he's uh, seeing her, he sees that she has these cut marks on her, and his, you know, evolved beast mind uh, sees that, you know what, she's a broken mind as he was, and that she is not like the others that he had come to make suffer because they were impure, and so then he leaves her. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think some people maybe felt that was a little anticlimactic, but I think it's leading up to more because as we know then at the end scene, what we see is the news report where they're talking about like, this happened, this guy was shot at point blank, and we don't know if he's alive or dead, and they're calling him the Horde because of the Horde of Personalities. Well, then it goes, the camera pans over to Bruce Willis, and uh, the people are like, wasn't there another guy like this like 15 years ago that they had to lock up because he was some kind of criminal mastermind over all these bombings and things? Didn't they give him a funny name like that too? What was that name? And then Bruce Willis says, Mr. Glass. And it's just like, whoa! So yeah, so the movie Split then was a secret sequel to Unbreakable, starring Bruce Willis. Unbreakable was... Like, for a long time, it was my favorite live-action movie. Obviously, Toy Story has been my favorite movie for a long time. Uh, but live-action movie for a while, that Unbreakable was my favorite. Loved that movie. Thought it was amazing. I remember hearing, um, you know, after it, like, it had come out on uh, probably VHS, <laughs> DVD, VHS, that, uh, that M. Night Shyamalan had planned to do a trilogy with it, um, but that didn't end up working. Um, a lot of it may have come from the follow-up to The Sixth Sense, I think with it starring Bruce Willis again, a lot of people thought it was going to be just like Sixth Sense, and in the marketing, the producers and the, and the companies didn't want to push the whole comic book and superhero angle, so they tried to, like, you know, advertise it as, as a thriller, you know, like, just like Sixth Sense. So it didn't do as well in the box office, um, so that trilogy didn't happen, and in my mind, it just was never going to happen, and then, poof! Here comes the secret sequel to Unbreakable, and it's really split, and it's about this guy, Kevin. Um, so, huge part of the story that I kind of skipped over in my recap um, has to do with that, and I think it really leads into to Glass. Um, the therapist tells us that there's a way to bring the real person when 
uh, a different personality has taken over him to bring him back, and that's by saying his full name, Kevin Wendell Crumb. Um, the therapist knew that. We don't know any other character that had known that prior to that, but uh, before she died, yeah, I know. It was, it was rough, too. That, that one was pretty disturbing, too. Um, but before she died, she wrote his full name out on the piece of paper. And so Casey is able to find that. And she says his full name and brings him back. And we realize that, whoa, this real guy in here, like, he didn't even know what was happening. He had no control. And we find out that he'd been gone for, like, two years. That these other personalities were running his life for, like, two years. And, uh, yeah, pretty mind-blowing, right? Well, now, in the, into the movie Glass, I, I think that's, that's going to be kind of a big deal that Casey knows his full name, and, and maybe that'll be uh, something that'll happen. But so pumped to see, like, a showdown, you know, of, of David Dunn, Bruce Willis, and, and James McAvoy uh, as the whores, the beast, um, coming up in Glass. Like, that's going to be pretty cool. So that's what it did. That ending where we saw... Um, Bruce Willis was pretty exciting, even though I already knew it was happening, because like I said, I'd read about it. Um, I can't imagine how excited or how stoked I would have been had I uh, <laughs> not known and, and you know just saw it then. Like I bet that would have been like over top, because really, Unbreakable. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. So um, how did this sequel come then of Split, you know, and how did they keep it a secret? How did they like pitch it and make it happen? Well. One of the cool things about it is M. Night Shyamalan funded it himself. Uh, he funded the movie and I also read that he funded Glass. Um, he's shelling out the money to make these movies happen. That's a pretty cool thing. Uh, you know, you don't really see that happening. Um, but obviously he had wanted to do it. The, the story of Split was written with Unbreakable. Uh, the story about Kevin and the Horde and all the different personalities and like, he was the one that had kidnapped the girls, which we see in Unbreakable, he goes and saves at the end. It was him, it was that story, but uh, Knight said that, you know, it, it really, there was such a draw to that character and the, and the personalities that uh, he had to write it out and to, to break it up into different movies. So, anyways, he'd been thinking about it, wanting to do it, and uh, I think it was at a Comic-Con where he saw James McAvoy and he's like, James, I am a huge fan of yours. And James McAvoy was like, I'm a great fan of yours. And as they were talking, uh, Knight just said that like, he knew this was the guy. He was the one to be it. And he wanted him to look just like he did right then. It, he was coming off of an X-Men movie where he had you know, a shaved head as Professor Xavier. And so his hair was just a little bit short. And he's like, I want you to look just like this. Uh, no wigs, no makeup, just like this. And so uh, he went for it and uh, made this movie that he had had and planned for so long. And now with Glass coming out, we're going to get the, the, the finale of it, the conclusion of it. So really, Glass is like a sequel to Split and a sequel to Unbreakable. Um, and they're all interrelated. And it's going to be pretty cool. I know the ratings haven't been very high. Uh, Split did have high ratings. It was uh, a 76%. And it made pretty good money too. It made 138 million, uh, and it's worldwide split with 278, approaching 300 million. So pretty, pretty good there. Um, Glass. The reviews are kind of low right now, but I'm not too worried about that. I mean, in a way, it almost makes me want to see it more. <laughs> Is it weird that I want to see it more now? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's gonna be awesome. Uh, and what, what was it really that I liked so much about Split? It really was James McAvoy. Like, that was what I was drawn and intrigued by about it. Uh, but then seeing it, it really didn't disappoint. It was so cool to see him take on these different personalities and to, uh, to be those characters. Like, in, it was so cool. Um, I was in a, in a stage community play of, of Mary Poppins and Partway through it, it, it turned out that I was going to be playing two different characters in it. And I remember the director being like, you have got to be like so different. You've got to talk different. You've got to walk different. Like you have to be those two different people uh, to be those characters. And so, I mean, you know, it was kind of a little like connection there. Like I felt like I had to try that once. Oh my goodness. James McAvoy. So good. Uh, it was said that while filming the movie, after they finished the scene, that the entire cast and crew would applaud 
because they were just so mesmerized and blown away by what they were seeing and what he was doing. It was so cool. And uh, for me, yeah, the greatest, greatest part of the movie was a scene where he was talking to the therapist and uh, she was like trying to say like, you're saying you're this personality, but I know you're, you're not. I know you're someone else right now. Um, and she could tell, and so that's where we learned about the name. And she's like, I know your full name and I could pull you out of this, uh, which she didn't. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> in that scene then, he finally like caves in and, and he switches and it's just crazy how right there, right in front of our eyes, we see this transformation from, from one personality to another. And I think it was done, the, like that was the most epic moment of it. That was my favorite part of the movie was just seeing that. So that was really cool. Pretty excited for Glass. I, I think you felt that as I've talked through this split review uh, and talked a little bit about Unbreakable as well. Uh, it'll be awesome to see these guys come together. James McAvoy, Samuel L. Jackson, Bruce Willis. Uh, I'm excited for it and I can't wait to see how it all concludes and how it all wraps up. But those are some of my thoughts on Split. I hope I covered enough for you. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, and I'm excited to go see Glass. It's opening January 18th, so we're almost there. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody.